This is Mike from One Stop Co-op Shop with my top 20 games of the year. A few quick notes on the list. This is based purely on the games that I did full 5 in 5 video reviews for, not Kickstarter demos or other games I talked about. And when I say this year, I am talking about all the games I reviewed in December of last year, 2018, plus up till now in 2019. Also, to be clear, some of these games do have competitive modes of play, but I'm ranking them purely on their solo and or cooperative play. Without further ado, let's get to the list with the best and worst thing about each game. Escape the Dark Castle is a nostalgic game with choose-your-own-adventure cards and dice-based combat where you try to survive long enough to defeat a boss. The best part is the wildly unpredictable adventures coupled with beautiful art on giant cards. The worst part is the totally random dice rolls with basically no mitigation. Sprawlopolis is a 1-2 player city-building micro-game with cards and changing scoring conditions. The best part is the scoring cards and how they combo together to change your play every single time. The worst part is when your scoring cards are totally contradictory and you have no chance of winning. Detective City of Angels is a film noir-inspired mystery game for 1-5 to five players with competitive and cooperative play. The best part is the witness questioning and interrogation, finding those lies and making them sweat. The worst part is that while the cases are interesting in solo and cooperative play, the best game mechanics are in the competitive mode. Legends Untold is a card-based campaign dungeon crawler with dice-based resolution. The best part is the variety in the chambers, encounters, traps, and monsters you'll fight during your quests. The worst part is the randomness and the repetitiveness of resolving every action in the game with 3d6 dice. Heroes of Tenefer is a cooperative card-based deck-building game with push-your-luck mechanics. The best part is the push-your-luck gameplay loop, deciding whether to keep three cards or hope for something better. The worst part is the lack of control in deck-building, when monsters will give you cards that don't synergize at all. Everdell is a mix of tableau building and worker placement with a dedicated solo mode. The best part is building your synergistic tableau made up of absolutely gorgeously illustrated cards. The worst part is the randomness of the card deck and the fact that you can wait forever and never get a card that's key to one of your combos. Dungeon Degenerates is a campaign-based dark fantasy adventure game with a branching narrative. The best part is the feeling of living in a breathing world with Ares becoming more or less dangerous based on your actions. The worst part is the art and the color scheme. It takes some getting used to. Chronicles of Crime is a cooperative mystery game with app integration through VR and QR code scanning. The best part is the first person VR, feeling like you're actually in the crime scene investigating. The worst part is getting stuck and obsessively scanning every single card combination with little hope of finding anything. The Adventure Game series with two releases so far is a throwback to old point-and-click adventure games with card-based exploration and a booklet of narrative options. The best part is how logic and theme come into play to create a realistic problem-solving setting. The worst part is the chore of digging through the adventure book again and again for three or six-digit number combinations. Arkham Horror Final Hour is a 1-4 to four player game with limited communication where you're trying to stop a great old one from entering the world. The best part is coordinating your turns perfectly even with the limits on communication and card play. The worst part is the possible frustration from both the limited communication and the possibility of flipping the wrong token right at the end of the game. Getting into the top 10, Dawn of Peacemakers is a campaign-based game where you use card-based actions to try to prevent a war. The best part is flipping unknown army cards and praying that they don't attack the people you're trying to save. The worst part is the realization that sometimes you could do nothing and the game would play out the exact same way. Number 9 is Madara, a JRPG-inspired campaign-based dungeon crawler with a branching narrative. The best part is exploring and experiencing a fully fleshed-out JRPG narrative. The worst part is the randomness of rolling four attacks, especially for enemies when they one-shot one of your characters on the second turn. Number eight is Pax Premier Second Edition, a game of board-based combat and tableau building with both competitive play and a solo mode with an AI. The best part is the tense action selection, purchasing and building the perfect tableau to confound the AI. The worst part is learning and executing the AI turns, which have several priorities to work through. Number seven is Cerebria, a game of area control over emotions in a human mind with cooperative, competitive, and solo play. The best part is putting together amazing combos with your emotion cards to shut out the AI in a scoring round. The worst part is digging through and learning the game on your first few plays, both for your own actions and for the AI turns. Number six is Unbroken, a solo game of dungeon survival with card choice and dice-based combat. The best part is the nail-biting choices of which cards to explore and when to rest. The worst part is the randomness of which monsters you face and the possibility that they'll be totally wrong for your weapons and your skills. Number five is Aftermath, an open-ended campaign game in Plat Hat's adventure book series. 
The best part is the open-ended campaign that lets you decide your objectives and how to tackle them. The worst part is waiting for expansions, because once you play through all the core content, there's not that much replayability. Number four is the revised edition of the Pathfinder Adventure card game, with campaign-based role-playing, card play, and dice rolling. The best part is the constant drip-drip of leveling up that keeps every session exciting. The worst part is setting the game up and tearing the game down, going through dozens of card types and building decks of them. Number three is Journeys in Middle Earth, a solo or cooperative adventure game with app integration. The best part is the interesting mix of building your deck and playing your cards to give you efficient options, but also the best chances of success. The worst part is the waste of a good theme, because this doesn't feel like Lord of the Rings, it feels like generic fantasy. Number two is Marvel Champions, the new Fantasy Flight living card game of epic superhero battles. The best part is the tactical puzzle of each hand, deciding which cards to pay and which cards to play. The worst part is the swinginess of solo play with one hero, where drawing the wrong card can lose you the game in an instant. And finally, my number one game of 2019 is Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. The best part is the adventuring and the card-based combat. They're both amazing. I love them. The worst part is dying at the end of a two-hour chapter and realizing you're going to have to repeat it all over again. And that's it. 20 good to amazing games in 2019, which I think has been an excellent year for solo and cooperative play. Let us know what your favorite games for the year were in the comments, and I'll see you at the next stop and another year of One Stop Co-op Shop.